The Palace of Art by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Alison Valdes The Palace of Art I built my soul a lordly pleasure house, wherein at ease for I to dwell. I said, O soul, make merry and carouse, dear soul, for all is well. A huge crag platform, smooth as burnished brass, I chose, the ranged ramparts bright, from level meadow bases of deep grass, suddenly scaled the light. Thereon I built it firm, of ledge or shelf, the rock rose clear, or winding stair, my soul would live alone unto herself, in her high palace there. And, while the world runs round and round, I said, reign thou apart a quiet king, still as, while Saturn whirls his steadfast shade, sleeps on his luminous ring. To which my soul made answer readily, Trust me, in bliss I shall abide, in this great mansion that is built for me, so royal rich and wide. Four courts I made, east west and south and north in each a squared lawn wherefrom a golden gorge of dragons spouted forth a flood of fountain foam and round the cool green courts there ran a row of cloisters branched like mighty woods echoing all night that sonorous flow of spouted fountain floods and round the roofs a gilded gallery that lent broad verge to distant lands far as the wild swan wings to wear the sky down to sea and sands from those four jets four currents in one swell across the mountain streamed below in misty folds that floating as they fell lit up a torrent bow and high on every peak a statue seemed to hang on tiptoe tossing up a cloud of incense of all odour steamed from out a golden cup so that she thought and who shall gaze upon my palace with unblinded eyes, while this great bow will waver in the sun, and that sweet incense rise? For that sweet incense rose and never failed, and while day sank, or mounted higher, the light, aerial gallery, golden-railed, burnt like a fringe of fire. Likewise the deep-set windows stained and traced would seem slow-flaming crimson fires, from shadowed grots of arches interlaced and tipped with frost-like spires full of long-sounding corridors it was that over vaulted grateful gloom through which the livelong day my soul did pass well pleased from room to room full of great rooms and small the palace stood all various each a perfect whole from living nature fit for every mood and change of my still soul for some were hung with arras green and blue, showing a gaudy summer morn, where with puffed cheek the belted hunter blew his wreathed bugle horn. One seemed all dark and red, a tract of sand, and some one pacing there alone, who paced forever in a glimmering land, lit with a low large moon. One showed an iron coast and angry waves, you seemed to hear them climb and fall, and roar rock thwarted under bellowing caves beneath the windy wall and one a full-fed river winding slow by herds upon an endless plain the ragged rims of thunder brooding low with shadow streaks of rain and one the reapers at their sultry toil in front they bound the sheaves behind were rounds of upland prodigal in oil and hoary to the wind and one a foreground black with stones and slags, beyond a line of heights, and higher, all barred with long white cloud the scornful crags, and highest snow and fire, and one an English home, grey twilight poured on dewy pastures, dewy trees, softer than sleep, all things in order stored, a haunt of ancient peace. Nor these alone, but every landscape fair, as fit for every mood of mind, or gay, or grave, or sweet, or stern was there, not less than truth designed. Or the maid mother by a crucifix, in tracts of pasture sunny warm, beneath branch work of costly sardonyx, sat smiling babe in arm. Or in a clear-walled city on the sea, near gilded organ pipes her hair, round with white roses slept St. Cecily, 
an angel looked at her. Or thronging all one porch of paradise, a group of houris bowed to see the dying Islamite with hands and eyes that said, We wait for thee. Or mythic Uther's deep-wounded son, in some fair space of sloping greens, lay dozing in the vale of Avalon, and watched by weeping queens. Or hollowing one hand against his ear, to list a footfall ere he saw, the wood-nymph stayed the Arsonian king to hear of wisdom and of law. Or over hills with peaky tops engrailed, and many a tract of palm and rice, the throne of Indian Kama slowly sailed, a summer fanned with spice. Or sweet Europa's mantle blue unclasped, far from her shoulder backward borne, from one hand drooped a crocus, one hand grasped the mild bull's golden horn. Or else flushed Ganymede, his rosy thigh half buried in the eagle's down, so all as a flying star shot through the sky above the pillared town. Nor these alone, but every legend fair, which the supreme Caucasian mind carved out of nature for itself was there, not less than life designed. Then in the towers I placed great bells that swung, moved of themselves with silver sound, and with choice paintings of wise men I hung the royal dais round. For there was Milton like a seraph strong, behind him Shakespeare bland and mild, and there the world-worn Dante grasped his song, and somewhat grimly smiled. And there the Ionian father of the rest, a million wrinkles carved his skin, a hundred winters snowed upon his breast, from cheek and throat and chin. Above the fair hall ceiling stately set, many an arch high up did lift, and angels rising and descending met with interchange of gift. Below was all mosaic choicely planned, with cycles of the human tale, of this wide world the times of every land so wrought they will not fail. The people here, a beast of burden slow, toiled onward pricked with goads and stings, here played a tiger rolling to and fro the heads and crowns of kings. Here rose an athlete strong to break or bind all force in bonds that might endure, and here once more like some sick man declined, and trusted any cure. But over these she trod, and those great bells began to chime, she took her throne, she sat betwixt the shining aureoles, to sing her songs alone. And through the topmost aureoles coloured flame, two godlike faces gazed below, Plato the wise, and large brown Verulam, the first of those who know. And all those names, that in their motion were, full-welling fountain-heads of change, Betwixt the slender shafts were blazoned fair, in diverse raiment strange, Through which the lights, rose, amber, emerald, blue, Flushed in her temples and her eyes, And from her lips, as morn from Memnon, drew rivers of melodies. No nightingale delighteth to prolong her low preamble all alone, more than my soul to hear her echoed song throb through the ribbed stone. Singing and murmuring in her feastful mirth, joined to feel herself alive, Lord over nature, Lord of the visible earth, Lord of the senses five. Communing with herself, all these are mine, and let the world have peace or wars, tis one to me, she when young knight divine, crowned dying day with stars making sweet clothes of his delicious toils, lit light in wreaths and anadems, and pure quintessences of precious oils, in hollowed moons of gems, to mimic heaven, and clapped her hands and cried, I marvel if my still delight in this great house so royal, rich, and wide be flattered to the height. O oh, all things fair to sate my various eyes, O oh, shapes and hues that please me well, O silent faces of the great and wise, my gods with whom I dwell! O godlike isolation which art mine, I can but count thee perfect gain! What time I watch the darkening droves of swine that range on yonder plain! In filthy sloughs they roll a prurient skin, they graze and wallow, breed and sleep, and off some brainless devil enters in and drives them to the deep. 
Then of the moral instinct would she prate, and of the rising from the dead, as hers by right of full accomplished fate, and at the last she said, I take possession of man's mind indeed, I care not what the sects may brawl, I sit as God holding no form of creed, but contemplating all. Full off the riddle of the painful earth flashed through her as she sat alone, yet not the less held she her solemn mirth and intellectual throne and so she throve and prospered so three years she prospered on the fourth she fell like herod when the shout was in his ears struck through with pangs of hell lest she should fail and perish utterly god before whom ever lie bare the abysmal deeps of personality plagued her with sore despair when she would think when e'er she turned her sight the airy hand confusion wrought wrote many many and divided quite the kingdom of her thought. Deep dread and loathing of her solitude fell on her, from which mood was born scorn of herself. Again from out that mood laughter at herself scorn. What, is not this my place of strength, she said, my spacious mansion built for me, whereof the strong foundation stones were laid since my first memory? but in dark corners of her palace stood uncertain shapes, and unawares, on white-eyed phantasms weeping tears of blood, and horrible nightmares, and hollow shades enclosing hearts of flame, and with dim-fretted foreheads all, on corpses three months old at noon she came, that stood against the wall. A spot of dull stagnation, without light or power of movement, seemed my soul, mid onward sloping motions infinite, making for one sure goal a still salt pool locked in with bars of sand left on the shore that hears all night the plunging seas draw backward from the land their moon-led waters white a star that with the coral's starry dance joined not but stood and standing saw the hollow orb of moving circumstance rolled round by one fixed law back on herself her serpent pride had curled no voice, she shrieked in that lone hall, no voice breaks through the stillness of this world, one deep, deep silence all. She, mouldering with the dull earth's mouldering sod, in rapt tenfoil and slothful shame, lay there exiled from eternal God, lost to her place and name, and death and life she hated equally, and nothing saw for her despair, but dreadful time, dreadful eternity, no comfort anywhere, remaining utterly confused with fears, and ever worse with growing time, and ever unrelieved by dismal tears, and all alone in crime, shut up as in a crumbling tomb girt round with blackness as a solid wall. Far off she seemed to hear the dully sound of human footsteps fall. As in strange lands a traveller walking slow, in doubt and great perplexity, a little before moonrise hears the low moan of an unknown sea, and knows not if it be thunder, or a sound of rocks thrown down, or one deep cry of great wild beasts, then thinketh, I have found a new land, but I die. She howled aloud, I am on fire within. There comes no murmur of reply. What is it that will take away my sin, and save me lest I die? So when four years were wholly finished, she threw her royal robes away. Make me a cottage in the vale, she said, where I may mourn and pray. Yet pull not down my palace towers that are so lightly, beautifully built. Perchance I may return with others there, when I have purged my guilt. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.